السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته It is morning It is Sunday Sunday has such a very peaceful vibe One thing I realized And I have been realizing this for a while now Is that I don't have a filtration system You know how our body has a system in place That's like you eat food You digest it The stomach works hard and then you get rid of the waste and then you have to release that waste. I realize I don't have a system like that. <laughs> It's one of the systems that I'm missing. I keep taking things on and then doing them. And when I finish, there's a lot of waste that's left in my brain, in my body, just exhaustion. And... I haven't figured out a way to release it yet. I figured out a way to avoid it, to turn off my brain. But I need to figure out, you know, that cycle of release. Constantly my desk is messy. I don't have a system to constantly clean it, right? And it's, it's, it, that's, that's a common routine in my life where I'm so good at solving the right now problems that Unless it's a problem right now, I won't solve it. And that's worked for survival. But now that I'm entering the phase of my life where I want to set myself up for thriving, and I'm thinking about what sort of habits do I want to pass out to, down to my kids, and just making life easier for myself. I really need to build that habit of a filtration system. How do you rest? That's what I've been wondering these past uh, couple of days. And it's like, there's different types of resting. My go-to resting method was just to watch something. Turn off my brain. Uh, stay in my house. Ignore everybody. But to me, that's really avoiding. That's not really resting. So I got to figure out a way to rest. I did an activity this week that was, I was driving by a park. I said, let me just stop. Let me pull out my lawn chair. Let me just sit in that chair and just watch these random people playing baseball. <laughs> and it was actually such a calming experience. I don't know what about it was. I just shut off my brain. I like the fact that they are, they were active and I could just watch them. And you know how, how people are playing and you could just judge in a way. You're like, oh, you missed that. Oh, you could have done that better. Oh, I liked, that was so calming. I kind of liked that, you know? Um, and it felt like I was in nature. I was in community without having to be with, like, deal with people. So I think I'm going to do more of that. I love being in nature. So I got to do more. So task number one, build a filtration system. And then the other thing that happened this week that was super cool was my mom. I have been one of my lists, one of my goals on my 2024 list is to memorize the Quran. I've obviously memorized the Quran before. The Quran has always been a part of my life. My mom kind of ensured that. Allahumma barik, may Allah bless her. But I've been quite neglectful of it. I have memorized it, but I haven't built a system in place to keep it. So obviously what happens is if you don't keep it, you'll forget it. The Quran is like a camel. The Quran is very easy to memorize and very easy to forget. So you have to keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it. So alhamdulillah, um, what, has, what I Gently was like, let me bring myself. Because here's the thing about starting new routines. You're not going to be perfect in the beginning. Matter of fact, if you look at the percentage wise, more times you'll still be doing your old habits than not. The battle comes is continuing, like continuing to fight, not letting the things like the days you miss 
be the defining moments, but rather the days that you make it. And just keeping at it and just keeping at it and deciding this is a lifestyle lifestyle change. Yeah, I may, I may have missed a day or two or three or four, maybe a couple of weeks, but I'm still going at it. You know, I'm still going at it because I'm trying. This is a lifestyle change for me. After learning that, I've been allowing myself to do that. And so something that's really been working is doing a, a something we call subah once a, once a week with my friends. Um, we're all people who've memorized the Qur'an and we're all in the same boat and we felt we were far away. And so doing something every three days or every day, it was hard. So we said, let's do once a week. <laughs> let's start with once a week. So we'd gather once a week and do something called subah, which is like a form of like review that is, uh, is it a Somali style? I'm not sure. I haven't seen any other culture do it. So it's it's a Somali way of reviewing where one person takes an ayah or one person takes a page and you just go around and everybody's doing it together. So that has been working. Alhamdulillah, we did one khatma. We're on our second khatma. May Allah bless it for us. The other thing was, randomly, my mom one day told me, hey, I started Qur'an with a new teacher, and I've been looking for a Qur'an teacher. And the thing about me is that, I think for the past, I don't know, the past couple of years, the past teachers that I've had, I would always start with them, but I never finish. And it was so, how do I say, I would start, I would get somewhere, and like, either a third of the way through or halfway through and then some life thing would happen and then I'll end up just leaving them and not finishing with them and that's been consistent I think for the past like <laughs> if I count one two three four four teachers that I've had in the past so this year one thing I wanted was like I need a teacher uh, that I could read on and I need to finish on that teacher I need to complete the whole Qur'an and get an ijazah from that teacher. I haven't done that in so long, and that's my goal now. So my mom was in a class, and she said, I started Qur'an with this teacher. She's in Somalia. Do you want to start? At that point, I was just ready. I just need somebody. Alhamdulillah, Allah taught me the fundamentals. I just need somebody to listen to and be consistent with. And so I hopped on that. I said, let's get started. Alhamdulillah. Today was my second day. It's fantastic. And I can't wait to continue. I gave myself a a doable amount of memorization. And then we're also going to be continuing the review. But Quran memorization, for those who've already memorized it, is is we have to review it. It really is review. It's really that bite-sized review that you do every single day. And then the rest, you just listen to it. You just be around it. The Qur'an, uh, I love the Qur'an so much. Like, there are different paths to Jannah for those. Some people get there with money by giving so much sadaqah. Some people get there with presents. Some people get there with sacrifice. Some people get there through dua. I want to get there through the Qur'an. I really want to be in the path of the Qur'an. There's nothing more healing than the Qur'an, and nothing more beautiful than the Qur'an, like, it is what I want to be obsessed with. <laughs> right now, my life is filled with a lot of things, and I tend to, I tend to ignore uh, the things that I, I need most, so the Qur'an is one of those things, but slowly but surely, I think, because I've always been in survival mode in the sense of, like, I'm very... I'm a very present person, very present person. Um, so if the problem's not right in front of me, it's hard for me to perceive it, right? Um, but now growing up, this means I have to look out for myself. I have to perceive the future problems. My da Your daily habits become who you, who you are, like the things that you do every single day. My next update is that finally... Alhamdulillah, finally, I've gotten a date for moving out of America. I am moving. I can no longer live in a colonial project. One thing uh, from the book, The Hundred Years War on Palestine, he said that America, Australia, 
a lot of these these countries that we've just normalized, we forget the fact that they are colonial projects just like Israel. And if one thing taught us about Gaza, Gaza really opened, really awoken our hearts, wallahi, and awoken our conscious, consciousness. And even if we are not aware, Gaza, we all, subhan al-malik al to think about the fact that the Prophet ﷺ talked about this time and spoke about this time, and I'm living in this time. I am of those Muslims that where he where he said that we will be as many as the froth in the sea, but our brothers and sisters are getting hit. Subhan al medical al Change only starts within yourself. You have to start with yourself. You have to start with yourself. You have to start with opening your mind. You have to start with awakening yourself and not running away from the fact that maybe you don't have enough knowledge maybe you're not doing enough maybe you you feel a lot but you haven't educated yourself to, to know the tools that you have to be able to utilize it one thing i know is that i need my life and my body and my brain and my and everything around me and my environment to be aligned with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, aligned with the deen. And there's no better place than living in Saudi. That's that's what I believe personally. Everything else, subhanAllah, rizq is written for you. Your rizq is already written. Wherever you go in this world is already written. What's going to go in your mouth? What's not going to go in your mouth? How hungry you're going to be? It's already written. Every single thing, every drop of water, Every single thing is written. Reading this book and, and learning about the things that are happening in Gaza and seeing the trajectory that America is already on, I saw a post that said, the future is post-Western. And I truly 1,000% agree with that because the West has really committed, subhanAllah, horrific, horrific crimes against the native populations that they are in. They have committed horrific crimes around the world, and now it's the bill is due. And you got to make decisions for your future. You got to make decisions for your lineage, the people, uh, the kids are coming. You got you to gotta make those decisions. And so, bidnillah, holding on to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm going to go to where my prophet, my prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is... And I pray all of you guys join us, inshallah. Um, did I write anything this week? No, I didn't write anything this week, I believe. This week has just been a stressful week. I've been in the gutter. But it's also been such a filling week. Like, it's it's been so f- filling. But I was also upset because I didn't put into perspective what I was doing. And it felt like from morning to night, hopping from one thing to another. And I just see, I just see my bad habits of putting too much on my plate or not knowing how to rest eventually leading to burnout. I could see that coming. So I have to, I have to change. Maybe, 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 maybe I could read you something that I already wrote. It's kind of a sunnah now, huh? being able to read you guys something from my writings. Don't bear the weight of the world. <laughs> that was one of the things. I have this little, I have this little cute notebook that I love so much, and it is addiction is a disease. Do the inventory of your life. Avoid the sunken place. I have these little <laughs> these um, sentences just in capital letters. Yeah. Okay, let me find you guys something to read. Should I go into the archives? Go into the archives of the books, of the things that I've written and the things that I've read. Um, I'm quite curious. Let me know. <laughs> let me know. Let me know what people do. 
Oh. <laughs> wow. January 27th. Wow, okay. Oh, I'm in my Udama Ufoka Lord or Ivam in Tata Lord. Every day we are fighting for our lives. We are fighting for our freedom. We are fighting for our heart. Every single day. Don't forget that. Okay. Oh, very interesting. Okay. I'm going to read you this. This I wrote when I was in... I didn't write a date. This was when I went to the Haram. I was when I went to the Haram. I went for a long trip. It was uh, like a five month, to six month trip. My mom is so used to just every time we go, you gotta find the Quran classes. You gotta be there and start. And so, I think I wrote this right after. Okay, just for now. I've enrolled in Quran classes in a mahad near me. It was smooth. Life thrives with routine. I'm here for a short period of time, shorter than I think. Before I really thought I had time to entertain myself to the point where that was my primary objective. I overcomplicated life. That's what happens when you get attached to the poison of capitalism and the kuffar world. When you got that dunya IV on, you get delirious. Things that are nothing become life or death. Entertainment and fun becomes the sole objective. I had a moment when my brain actually asked me today, if I don't watch this, what else am I going to do with my time? That's how dependent I got. I was so shocked at the stupidity of the question and more so that it really emanated from within me sincerely. Me, who has so much to learn, so much that is beyond her lifetime, really stood there and said, what else would I do with my time? Time is split into five portions. By each salah we have. I really carried my demons with me. That's what happens when you don't organize your time you'll get an Iblis curriculum geared towards getting you addicted to the path of Jahannam. I saw my demons clearly since I came here, and I also saw my peaceful life, the life I intend to live until Malakul Mot visits to take me. Iblis wants me to believe that the peaceful life is difficult and hard. But that's just his propaganda. The deen is easy. Allah made it easy. The Prophet Sallallahu taught it to us easy. It is easier than constantly carrying a brick for a heart. Right now I'm sipping tea, listening to Ida'atul Qur'an Kareem, reflecting on my day, and I feel so at peace and so happy and content. Allah didn't ask us to kill ourselves or overwork ourselves. He said, do your best and give everything its due right. And Allah loves the small and consistent. I also found out that the kidney is shaped like a bean. The kidney is shaped like a bean. I don't know. what. There, there, gotta, be, there gotta be some connection there. Why is a bean, a bean, that's like a seed that goes through, through uh, like, the, is shaped like the kidney that is inside of us. There's some wisdom there. I don't know what it is, but yeah, food for thought. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you for listening. You've been listening to Studio Diaries, and I am Muna Sheikh Omar. I'll see you in the next episode.